Good morning viewers. Welcome to Top of the Morning by Mint. Your weekday newscast that brings you five major stories from the world of business. It's Thursday, August 8th, 2024. My name is Nelson John. Let's get started. After crashing for a few days, the Indian equity markets recovered on Wednesday. Sensex and Nifty were up by more than 1.1%. Ram Sagal writes that much of yesterday's recovery could be attributed to a change in investor sentiment. The Bank of Japan's deputy governor sued investors by saying that the sell-offs were temporary and adopted a dovish stance. The markets in Japan crashed after the Bank of Japan increased its interest rates by 25 bonus points and its effects were felt in bourses all over the world including India. However, market experts told Ram that any more conflicts arising in the Middle East could yet again lead to more selling of stocks. Bangladesh was born in 1971 after being carved out of Pakistan. It was a nation grappling with poverty and socio-economic challenges and several coup attempts. However, it achieved a remarkable feat in just about 4 decades when it emerged as the world's second largest garments exporter. Bangladesh capitalized on the availability of labor to produce garments at cheaper rates and became an exporting hub with the sector making up about 85% of its total exports. As the country continues to combat domestic unrest, Payal Bhattacharya explains the country's economic progress and the reason why a stagnant economy led to the ouster of Sheikh Hasina. Tata Motors sells 80% of four-wheeled electric vehicles sold in India today, but it's not resting on its laurel. Its latest offering, Curve, is priced rather aggressively. Alicia Sachdev writes that such prices, combined with the reduced GST on EVs, has helped Tata corner such a large share. Alicia spoke to Silesh Chandra, MD of Tata's passenger vehicle division. Chandra avoided calling this pricing as strategic, which is competitive with Tata's petrol and diesel versions. Tata hopes to buck the trend of slowing four-wheel sales with this launch. and its pricing will definitely help. If you were planning on becoming an investment advisor as a career option, you'd have to register with SEBI to pursue it. Becoming a registered investment advisor or a research analyst is a long process, or at least was until Monday. Late on Tuesday evening, SEBI came out with a draft proposal that would ease the requirements for one to become an RIA or an RA. Neil Borat and Anil Poste break down these requirements and tell you how this notice is a shot in the arm to India's beleaguered investment advisor landscape. Kota was the mecca for any competitive exam aspirant. Millions of kids flock to the coaching capital of India to try and become an engineer, doctor or civil servant. But of late, the inflow of students has reduced greatly. A couple of years ago nearly 200,000 students used to come to Kota. This year coaching centers pegged that number as reduced to just around 70,000, right? Stevina Singh Gupta. But it's not just teachers and coaching institutes that are suffering. An entire ecosystem that was built to support the large influx of students is now floundering as well. Devina presents an on-ground report from Kota about the current situation and a historical review of the town. We'd love to hear your feedback on this episode. Do let us know by writing to us at feedback at the rate lifemint.com. You may send us feedback, tips, or anything that you feel we should be covering from your vantage point in the world of business and finance. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. We're eagerly looking forward to our next top of the morning episode, which will be backed with fresh business news. Until then, have a great day.